just cause a Charlie Napier, aka the Carpenter, is on the on the line here yeah. soon. We got but him. We got, the him legendary, in, we got him in a keep sack out there. Got man, the legendary one of the found founders, one of the founders. Yeah, I feel like there's like three, no, actually four founders: Gilbert Hugsley, Rick Slinker. Yeah, I was gonna say Rick. Uh, Charlie Napier, and I feel like it was a. Uh, Another uh, carpenter, and I like to say Andy Andy Carper, but yeah, that's I'm a, sure uh, another story. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say I know I know somebody. Oh, Gilbert knows. Gilbert knows, who Gilbert knows he's watching. And Charlie knows who it is. Yeah, but there, man, there was some back in the day. There were some old schools, and I'm like, when they like, when it the Hoosier Carper Carpers walk by, and everybody's just like. Oh, yeah, the legends, everybody knew who they the were. You know what I mean? They the was, legends, but but they are they but they are legends though because they they've legends. been doing this longer than a lot of people though too. Yes. You know. So I'm excited to talk to Charlie here in a second. Yeah. But in other news, big big news. Uh, yeah, you can tell I got cold, don't you? Yeah, a little bit. I think I'm gonna put a barrier up right here. I got here. sniffles. Let me go get a sheet or something. We can put right here. I got the sniffles. <laughs> but anyway, yes. Um, the 20, 24. Oh my God. What is it? February the third. February third. Mark your calendars. Mark your calendars. Carp Expo Chili Meat. Yes, is going to be at the same location, but the building next but the bigger door. building. Big building, and I swear uh, we're going to try to get. This. We're going to try to fold the house in this place. We get. We're definitely going to try to pack it this oh, year. Oh man, and I. And I we get. We already got a lot. Of, what, uh, that's around pay Lakers. We do get a lot of pay Lakers in this. I mean, we're going to have people coming. There's going to be people from places. everywhere, but. But I'm trying to get more wild carper products inside this building. Yes. If we get more wild carper products in this building, this, this it's going to attract a, a whole ton. And another thing, too, about it being good on yeah. February 3rd is yes. the boat sport and travel hasn't It's not going to even yeah, occur. It, it, it hasn't even started yet, so we're yeah, kind of getting two weeks a before that. early start on that. So. Oh, um, my God. But, this, but we the, need your guys' help, though, too. On a lot of things, yes. Uh, mainly for um, you know, trying to get wild water gear in there for guys here Please. and coming for sale. I mean, I'm um, so if you know somebody, you know, maybe um, carpangler.com. Carp maybe we'll we would love we we would, we would love to see Raphael here. Love to see World Classic Bakes come back. Um, was they here last year? Huh? They wasn't here last year, oh. was they? No, they haven't no. been here in a couple of years. Who? World Class of Bates. Yeah, that's, they, they, yeah they, it's, it's been a little bit. I like to see them get back in there. Yeah, they're only from mean? Illinois. Yeah. They got some good, they got some good pack baits there too. You know, some fine product pack baits. Uh, trilogy. Did they got, they trilogy. Trilogy. Yeah, trilogy. Michigan boys. Yeah. I was about to say, cause oh they, used to, they used to come too, man. And, you know, it's like, I mean, we got people coming from, and, and there are, I mean, they've been bugging the heck out of me. And when when are, when are we when are you gonna find out about the boost space? When are you gonna start putting? Yeah, out? when are we gonna do this? I was like, I'm ready to go on duty. And well, let's try to find a building. We couldn't find a building. We weren't sure what exactly was going on. Now we got that stuff. Also, I do want to give a shout out to Hunter yep. Wolf. Yep, Hunter Wolf we got this um, place rented out for us, and it's set in stone. I yeah, mean, this place is beautiful. Great sound system. Plenty of tables and chairs. <laughs> Plenty of room. Plenty of room. Um, you know, normally we only do one table per booth. Um, this year, what they get two? Oh, I think yeah, you got two tables. All they get two tables. We got plenty of table spaces. Um, plenty we will have eat. plenty of plug-in space. So if you got, you know, signs, whatever, you know, a display or whatever you want to bring, um, we will have plug-ins for that. So we we'll have electricity. This place is heated. Oh my God! Uh, we have we have a full kitchen. There is a pop machine in there. Two bathrooms in there. Water fountain. Kitchen. Um, full kitchen. Um, and of course, uh, Kenny Max provided the food. Yep, Kenny Max can our provide head, chili. Our lead sponsor for this tur uh, for this tournament for this 
uh, yeah, our heads, Carpex our, our main sponsor is big is big money is big beavers. money beavers. Shout out to Mike Thornburg. Yep. Um, he's you know he's made a nice uh, good donation little donation to us. Um, you the, know we don't want just him to be you know our only main sponsor. Like we want other sponsors too. Um, anything that's gonna help out the team with buying trophies for the White River Invitationals and uh, you know big money I mean? beavers already on top of that too. No, I know that's yeah. what I'm saying though. You know what I mean, but. Yeah, he's we already. we need more people like him yeah. on board. That's what you know. Uh, I mean, we can't make nobody you know come on board or anything. You know what I mean? But uh, he's back paying for all the chili. Yeah, but and we are having a good. Yeah, uh, we listen. We are gonna have a chili cook off also. Oh. Uh, oh. Me oh. and me and yeah. Oh. Because I must have missed that memo. Well, I mean, I, I, th fine. I thought we talked about it in the group. That's fine. Was you at work? I must been at work. That's fine. I mean, it's it. I, I don't. I don't. I guess I really don't know how we'll do it since Kenny Mac is making a bunch of chili because he made like a thousand pounds of chili. Like, yeah. there was. We still had. We could. We we'd still be eating chili. Yeah. Right now, he made I so much. That's. that's he said, "I think I still got some." Freezer. Freezer. But hey, we appreciate <laughs> we appreciate him doing that though. Heck like, yeah. appreciate he, everybody. Hey, uh, we appreciate anything. Uh, um, drinks. You know, I'll, we're gonna be honest to you guys about this too. You know. Um, we normally had a set donation that we would give the UAW uh, for letting us, you know, use the hall and stuff. Um, we do have to pay this time, uh, it, it, not just a donation. Um, I, you know, I'm gonna let everybody know, like, you know, it, what it costs. I mean, do, I mean, does it matter? It I mean, matter. It's like it, it, it's costing us five hundred dollars for the hall. Um, yes, we have some of it covered. Uh, shout out to Kenny Mack, or not Kenny, I'm sorry, not Kenny Mack, but Mike Thornburg for his sponsorship donation. You know what I'm saying? That's going to go towards that and help us make sure. And a hunter, hunter Wolf. Yeah, Hunter Wolf, he put it, he, he, you know, he put it in it too. Um, we're, we're just a little bit shy of the 500 right at that. But, uh, uh, but yep, yeah, we got to lie. The booth's going to be about $50 per, per, per booth. Uh, Two tables. Disturber gets two tables. If they want to bring their own table to that booth, that's fine. Yeah, but if you don't have, if you don't, uh, but you, you if don't you don't to. want to, you don't have to. We have plenty of tables. No, oh, we got tables. Uh, yes, we will have a cake uh, with your name on it, Raphael. Raphael, <laughs> how you doing? Uh, but yeah, man, like we're excited about this, you know. Um, We've been doing this ever since Jim Donnelly and pretty much passed the torch to us. Oh, let's, let's get bigger and bigger. Yeah. We get, my, my opinion, a good, I feel like a good 500, 600 people that comes throughout through, the day. Throughout the day. Um, from different parts of states. You got. From, so, what, what is our work now? Because, I mean, people's watching and, you know, people's going to talk about this and everything. So, yeah, the Barrett be talking about this is going to be a big event. You guys better get your guys act together and let's go. Because February the 3rd. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. I mean, that's the day. If you, it's the if you miss this out, you're a loser, dude. I don't care. You're a loser. <laughs> this is gonna, this show is gonna be awesome. Uh, so it's gonna be February third. What's the what's the time? Like what's the exact time that we're ten gonna... to four. Ten to four. Cutoff time for ra raffles is two. Three. I would say two forty five. We'll do two all four. raffles at three o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop selling tickets at 2.30. That way we can get everything ready. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? I feel like it's too... What, too early? It's too like, early. Do you think well, just think about how people, you know, people because come and... Because we try to get that money going, going, you know. And... Yeah, I know, but, you know... But if you... Whatever, man. So, I'm just saying, like... This is your show now. No, it's no, not. this is your show. No, it's no, this is your show. show. This James, is all about... We're not going to do this. This is all about you now. We're, we're alive. <laughs> we're alive. We ain't going to do this. <laughs> we ain't going to do this right now. No. No, uh, but this is gonna be a really good show. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, you're fine. You're the ones uh, running. But that yeah, so me and Jeremy Bernard, you know, we'll be we'll be doing the booth uh, with the raffles. Um, Donations. We don't even know, you know, what all is gonna be on the tables or what's gonna be donated. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be a good event. Also, we're gonna have a uh, another table too for uh, swap stuff. So if you guys got some stuff that you want to sell. Yeah. Or swap with uh, for another carp angler, 
we'll have a special And it don't paper. have to be fishing related. I, you know, this is what I'm going to say. I, I don't think it should have to be fishing yeah, related. To bring some Roger to, soap, dude. Well, I'm just saying for you to come and get a booth. Dixie cups. Dixie cups. Bring <laughs> some Dixie cups. <laughs> Jim Wedley said February third. February third, and yeah. that's that's not enough time. We're gonna, we're gonna do ten a.m. to four p.m. Raffles at three. That way, that last hour, everybody's gonna be coming and get doing clean up yeah, and too. everything like that. Yeah, you guys, stress. This is gonna be a big event. I have never ever heard one complaint about this event for except the 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 year of twenty twenty, the shortage of the chili. Yeah. Yeah. We're, and that's when Kenny Mack pretty much came they, in and was like, oh, around. shortage of chili? No, that's, that was 2021. Shortage. Here's, a, here's a big pot like this big, boys. Yeah, the the year of the, the shortage of the chili. Not only that, too, but he gave, you know, he donated. I think only three pots of chili. He came. donated a whole <laughs> fishing trip. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about a full-blown fishing trip to Dale Hollow. Yeah. Um, little Jerry uh, Wilson, he's the one that won that. Um you know, we appreciate you, Kenny Mack, for donating that. That was very nice of you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, we're going to take, we're trying to invest whatever money that we make back into the team. So whatever money we make off the booths, we're going to go try to buy a few items to put back up on the table for it's you guys to day try day to buy guys. some raffle Trust tickets. Um, we get people from We're Kentucky, trying to step Illinois. it up a little bit more this year. Ohio, uh, PA. South I even Carolina. talked to my old lady. My New old lady, York. she's going. We're, we're going to try to decorate it a little bit this year. We're yeah. going to have some black and yellow in there, just team colors. Um, so, I, raffle yeah. items. Raffle items. You know, if you or you know whatever stuff, flavor we're, company we're, you, there's going to be some auction stuff going to be auctioned off too. We, you know, anything and everything that you guys donate to us, like we greatly appreciate it more than everybody knows. Um, so if you know if that's you, or somebody you know wants to donate a gift card, you know to put on the table or whatever it may be, and that's what me and Ricky was talking about. We was talking about just doing a gift card for the chili cook-off. Okay. That way, whoever wins, you know, because we're trying to get the women more involved back again. Because you remember when the women was cooking all the chili before, they was bringing the pots of chili over there to West Side. Yeah. They was more involved. So if we can get them more involved too, you oh, know, they might want to do for Jim. Huh? Anyway. Everybody want to do anything for Jim. Yeah. Jim was like the man. Well, I mean, he, he's always going to be the man. Yeah. You know? But, yeah, so we're, we, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll have more details, you know, hey, along, the, yeah. along the way. That That's a, a sticker a sticker from Bait Pro. Thank you. I'll take that. Yeah, but, uh, uh, that's from the flavors. Let's call, let's call Charlie, then we'll start talking to him about this to you, too. So. Yep. We're coming after you, Charlie. Got the carbon he said, which, which one was his number? The one circle. Going. Oh, man. man, I like all stuffy, dude. Ooh. Awesome, you've been a stranger, bro. Man, you don't fish much no more. No, I haven't fished in eight years, other than uh, you know, just uh, camping trips with the kids and stuff, just crappie fishing, stuff like that. Yeah, wow, sweet, sweet, sweet. So, uh, uh, me and uh, Tom here has been talking, how he, he was like one of the found founders of the Huger Carpers back in the day. Yeah, yeah, I met Gilbert back in 2003, yeah. I think it was, out at, uh, actually at Eagle Creek. Eagle Creek, gotcha, gotcha. That, uh, uh, how old are you now, Charlie? 52. Oh, okay, we're both, we're both of us, we're both the same age. Yeah, we're both old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Aren't we? You guys are in your prime. Yeah, yeah, but, uh. Yeah, this uh, I was talking. You know, everybody back in the day uh, knew the the carpenter. Uh, you definitely uh, 
was right there with all the tournaments you guys played on. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, when uh, the Houston Carpenter back in the day, they started the the, uh, the Houston Carper Trail or something like that, they were getting the, the uh, tournaments ready. And, uh, you guys started at the beginning of the year, or you guys had the chili uh, cook off, and it was at your house. Yeah, we had the first one at our house on uh, McLeod Street over on the west side back in, I think, 2005 or something like that. Shoot, man. Long time ago. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, I, I think Rick, Rick Slinker was the chairman then. Yeah, I think so too. But, uh, oh, for the Hoosier Carpers, uh, was uh, Gilbert Hugsley like the, the tag chairman back in the day? Yeah, when I met Gilbert in 2003, he was the CAC chairman. I think the year before that, it was uh, Richard Somerville. But when I met Gilbert, I, uh, I'd been car fishing for, well, I'd been car fishing since 1993. I started fishing out the wild in probably about 2000. Okay. And then, uh, I was just looking for more places to fish. You know, I didn't know anybody who fish for car fishing. Like so, Right. I got, I got on uh, Car Penguin's crew. Uh, that's the second summer. I joined the Car Penguin's crew. I, uh, but then I rejoined the website. At that time, they had the, uh, the CAG forum. Yeah. Uh, but that was just starting. They, they still have it. So, yeah. Yeah, but they also had, uh, it was like, uh, the Yahoo. But that's how I did it. I did something on the next thing. Where the Jets cars in Indianapolis. In the wild, the camera was on. You guys hear them? Mm -hmm. And they would meet me out at Eagle Creek, and I met up with him, and that's when uh, the Indy cars took off. Okay. It was, uh, it was Katie Gilbert. Rick, Rick Strip Bob, uh, Stan Guy, a uh, guy named Doyle Grossley, and uh, uh, Gilbert Smith. So, uh, yeah, uh, um, go. Hey, Charlie, um, the, view, the people that are watching right now, uh, they're having a little bit of problems of, of hearing you. Can you speak up just a hair if you can? Sure can. And Carl, hey, and Carl Hamer said, "Wow, a real blast from the past." How are you doing, Charlie? Good, good. Carl was a good friend of mine. On I talked to him a lot on the tag for him. You remember? Got in trouble a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine some of the stories you guys probably got. Okay, so like, okay. Uh, real quick, uh, you know, kind of get the show going here real good. Uh, uh, go ahead and tell them about your uh, your. Who you are, sort of people for the car bankers that don't know you, uh, and uh, you know how long you have you was car fishing, and then, of course you're coming out of retirement now after eight years. But go ahead. Uh, I started fishing for car probably about '93. Okay. Uh, been married a couple years. Started fishing. Uh, actually. Was fishing with my brother in Ace Lake. First time I caught a carp. Uh, I don't know if most people uh, is Ace Lake even around anymore. Nope. Uh, it was ju it was literally just so some months back, and they're starting to fill it in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, back back when I was there at Ice Lake. Uh, but I went uh, cat fishing with my brother, and that's where I caught my first carp. I didn't know what it was. Thought it was carp, and I just. It's all started right there, and uh, I guess I started fishing at Indy Lake. Soon after that, uh, back when Bobby Hubbard was out there, uh, this was a long time ago. I mean, this was before we were even using Pack Bay. Right. So this is back in no ball days. Uh, I didn't know anybody out there. I just, for my own, started out using cords on no ball. Right, like no balls and things like that. I fished out there about two years by myself and in about 95. Uh, we had a guy that 
come to work with us named uh, Bill Wilson. And he uh, mentioned he carp fished and paid like this. So I was like, all right, yo, now I got somebody to fish with. So it tur- turned out he was best friends with uh, Bobby Hubbard. So I never really talked to Bobby Hubbard before that. I have always cared to talk to him. <laughs> So I, I started fishing with Bill, and so he kind of helped me out. I got that good time. And uh, probably fished with him for about a year. And about a year, about a year after that, uh, some guys from Richmond come out to Indy Lakes. And that was the first time that we ever seen pack babies out there. And Bobby Hubbard was actually the first guy at Indy Lights here and sent my hand and, uh, to uh, figure out figure out what they would use it and he started using he started using uh, that thing kind of figured it out and uh, kind of shared it with Bill Bill shared it with me this is probably about 95, 96 and just uh, kind of kind of went from there, and uh, probably fished out there till probably about 2000, and then uh, and then started uh, started wild carp in about 2000, kind of back and forth between my lakes and you know fishing in the wild until I kind of hooked up with Gilbert and the guys in 2003. So. Right. But yeah, I, I, I knew Bobby Hubbard from way back, way before he, he had his, had his pay lake. <laughs> you know, I was young <laughs> at, at the pay lake, fishing with all those guys. 2003, yeah. Yeah, I was 23 back then. Like, I remember uh, Bill Whitley, uh, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm friends with his son, little Bill Whitley. Uh, yeah. And have been for years, you know what I mean? Like, I used to fish with Bill, uh, Bill Whitley's dad at, at Wagner when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. And Bobby, oh, yeah. I, you know, I remember seeing Bobby Hubbard show up in his fish truck after he got hubs. You know, I still, I'm still stuck on Wagon. Well, I had never even been to hubs yet. Yeah. And he came and put a bunch of load of fish in for a wagon wheel, and he was like, "You guys want to see some real fish?" He was like, "Come watch what I'm about to put in my lake." Uh, you know what I mean? Because yeah, all the all the lakes back then wasn't worried about. Big fish, big fish, big fish. They wasn't. They, they didn't want to pay for the big fish, so they was just yeah. buying that. They, you know, back then it was about catching thirty or forty fish. You know what I mean? It uh, wasn't about you know if you hit a little sixteen pound jug, that was cool. You know what I mean? But if you caught a twenty pound fish back in the day, <laughs> hey, you was something because you know big fish wasn't as plentiful in the pay lakes back then. No, no, I might have caught maybe maybe four or five a year. Yeah, and it was it was always something special when you caught one. Yeah, because they wasn't in there like that, and that's you know I think that's where a lot of people misconstrue, uh, you know I guess my passion for some of the passion that people have nowadays for pay lake fishing. You know it's it's more tournament style, it's more competitive. You know what I mean? Yeah, fast. Yeah, more fast pace. You know yeah. instead of just going out there and like, bro, I caught forty three fish last night. Don't matter. That yeah, back. Back when I first started fishing out there, nobody caught that amount of fish. I mean, back when you used to balls, it wasn't like that. Yeah. We didn't start catching numbers of fish until we started using pack bait. And like I said, nobody was using pack bait until about 95. Mm-hmm. And and that comes from guys from Richmond that came out there. And uh, me, Bobby, and Bill, seeing what they was doing and was trying to figure it out, we didn't know what they was using. And Bobby Hubbard actually was watching him with binoculars, and that's how he figured out what they were using. <laughs> he, uh, if I remember right, he actually went to some feed stores in Richmond and had to get around. Because all we knew, they was using something in, in feed bags. Okay. We, didn't, we, we didn't know what they was doing. I mean, we knew they were using no baits because no makes a certain sound when it hits the water. <laughs> and they were using softball size bait balls so but Bobby figured it out. He shared it with Bill, Bill shared it with me and for about for about a month we had a good time before everybody else figured it out. But, you know, 
one guy tells this guy to say, you know, yeah. Yeah. everybody's using it. And, and it, it was just going to be built. It's going to be built for the next four or five years up until probably about 2002, 2003. About the same time I met Gilbert and the guys. Okay. Same started changing out there again with like North Carolina style pack baits and stuff. Guys like Reamers. I don't know if he, he, if he ever gets on your uh, comments on your podcast, but he's the Mount Richmond. I know he, they're a little bit ahead of us, and uh, they were using some of that stuff before we were. I actually, they have got the fish with a guy named Tom Brooks. Uh, he was Mr. Big on the tag board, and he kind of turned us on to stuff like rice and oats and grits and chow and, and millet and that stuff what didn't start getting used out there until early 2000s because we was all still using soybean milk yeah. so and, and people were still using beets you know he kind of turned us on to corn pops and corn puffs and, and all that stuff so and it kind of changed again after that still can't go wrong with a good bead man <laughs> sure Break out uh, that old lawn chair. Charlie Corn. Oh, yeah. What's a hey, what is Char what's Charlie Cornbread? Um <laughs> I'll take a piece of white bread. I always bring a bag of bread with me no matter what. And if my pack bait ain't working, I'll take a piece of bread, lay it in my hand, put about seven or eight kernels of corn in it, lay my four ounce sinker in it. I use a bull rig with my hair rig. I'll lay my four ounce lid in that, and I'll just squeeze it around my uh, my lead, and uh, I use that man so many times. Got so many fish on that. <laughs> my first day in Texas when we went to Texas, that's what I used, and I caught my thirty on that. You know that that's that's funny you say that because you know I, there's only two people that I knew back in the day they did that kind of style, and they probably learned it off of you. And that one of them was Jim Donlin, and the other guy, and it, and the other person was Earl the Pearl. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say Gilbert because I know Gilbert does it. Every oh, I, so yeah, I haven't seen him do it yet. I mean, yeah, there's Gilbert. Uh, he he knows all the yeah. Tricks. He knows all the tricks, but I mean, Gilbert Gilbert won't admit it because he's sponsored by World Classic Bait. So I think <laughs> when World Classic ain't working, he'll use some of my stuff, but he'll never tell you that he can't. So but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all we all know. Oh yeah. You no, know, I love Gilbert. Yeah, for sure. And he's been with World Classic Baits uh, since you know the, uh, I want to say right after, not too long after they first started, wasn't it? What? World oh Classic yeah, Bates. yeah. He'll have I think Rick first. But yeah, and it's it's good, but it's good, but I, I I give him and Rick a hard time, but I've used it. It's good, bait. Yeah. And, and the way they make it up, they they both have good mixes. You remember back in the day, uh, uh, of course, uh, I got the idea for this uh, podcast, Carp Talk. Uh, we actually had a, a website that Jim Donald made up for the Hoosier Carpers back in the day called Carp Talk. Mm -hmm. Indiana Carp Talk. Indiana Carp Talk, that's right. And we had, and the, the, the thing that was kind of crazy and special about Indiana Carp Talk. Everybody had their own handles, handle name. Like mine was like, like uh, Fish Fighter One, and uh, Gilbert Hugsley was like Andy. Uh, Andy Carper. Andy Carper, yes. And of course, you, the Carpenter, and uh, yeah. Rick Slinker had. Uh, Carpio uh, Hunter. Yeah, Carpio Hunter. You know, <laughs> I mean, it just kept on going. You know, it's it, it, everybody. Uh, Big Daddy Carpster, rest in peace. Uh, yeah. Why and, uh, you know, and I, I was pay laking at that time when I started seeing all like yeah. the you know all that stuff going on and the mass carping, uh, uh, the mass, mass carping uh, going on. That was me to been to that. No, I know, yeah. I know, I, I you know I seen all that. You know what I mean? And that start that's really what caught my attention to like what was going on in the wild scene. You know, because yeah. I was such a pay, I, you know, I've been a pay laker my whole life. I feel so. like a lot of pay lakers. Uh, once they got a hold of the uh, wild carper, yeah, right. wild carping, and you it's it's a, it's a bug that it, gets you. For yeah, sure. it's a bug. It get, you know they actually they hey, hey there is more of this than just hey like there's more fish out uh, there. 
I think a big part of it is the social aspect of it because yeah, yeah. I uh, like in your you're kind of a you're kind of solo unless you got a fishing partner. Mm. I, I I was pretty much by myself out there for ten years. I mean, like I said, I fished with Bill for a little bit, but then Bill hurt his back right. and he didn't fish as much. And although I talk about Bobby a lot and we fished together, it was really through Bill more than anything. Right. So once Bill heard his back and quit fishing, I mean, Bobby would always stop by wherever I was fishing at and say, hey man, what's going on? What are you using? How's it going? Or, and vice versa. But I, I was pretty much alone. So when I met Gilbert and the guys, it was, you know, I, I just enjoyed having somebody to fish with that, that actually liked the car share. Right. That would actually tell me what they were using, share things with me, and I could do the same, you know. Jim put out like a Jim Don back in the day. He put on a hell of a show, did he? Oh yeah, he. Uh, we were probably together a couple years, and then he really started doing all the like the White River Invitational. He started the tournament trail in two thousand and seven. Yeah which I won the first year of the, the tournament trail. And, and uh, my two boys, they uh, won all kinds of door prizes. Oh, they were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all kinds of stuff. They won all kinds of money. My, my son James won so much money fishing that tournament trail, but at the end of the first year, he actually bought a Fox Sky Pod. Nice. And he was only nine years old. So but Jim was actually the guy that coined the term Hoosier Carpers. Yeah. Because we, we always ourselves the Indy Carpers oh. after Gilbert and Jim was the one that come up with the name Hoosier Carpers and he started selling t-shirts at West Side and giving us t-shirts with with Hoosier Carpers on it and, and things like that so you, do you know Doyle Roebling? He's the one that brought all the your peeps. Uh, I, I was going to say yeah. if you go back to about 2003 Doyle, Doyle Roebling brought it. Yeah. Gilbert already had a rod pod. I don't know where he got it. I can't remember where he got it at, but Gilbert had a rod pod. Stan had one. Yeah. Uh, Bill Smith had one, but most of us were still using upside-down lawn chairs. <laughs> but Doyle found a website called X2, and what they was, they sold surf fishing equipment. Huh. So they, they sold bait runners, loader rods, and they sold rod pods and alarms. Shabano and reels Doyle everywhere. got a stainless steel rod pod through them. I remember that. They took it up to West Side and showed Jimmy. Oh. And that's when Jimmy started buying that stuff off yep. of them. And also he started buying stuff off of uh, off the sale of Wacker Banks at that time. Yeah, Wacker Jim Bank. was buying everything. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, he was buying yeah and then next, the next year, actually, American Carp Society come along and they started selling carp gear. Uh, Sean, Sean Manning, Wayne Boone, Dave Moore. Dave Moore was with them before he started Big Carp Tackle. And, uh, and then Jim started getting stuff through Dave also. But yeah, Doyle started a lot of that stuff. You know, I'm surprised we ain't had them, you know, big, you know, as much as we, you know, try to promote and stuff like that, man. What? Like, we've always shouted out Big Carp Tackle and all oh, that yeah. and stuff, and we could never get them. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're, into the they're in their own league right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but still, you know, I mean, you know, it's all about supporting the people that support you. Yeah, yeah they're all their own league. But that, that was what you just said, uh, Charlie. Is a, yeah, that's a, I feel like Doyle, at, back in the day, Jim, you know, of course, they see that first item that Gilbert had, and then Doyle brings all his other kind of cool gadgets. And I think, you know, once a man sees that kind of stuff, and it's like, man, they got these pretty lights, you know, things that oh, make yeah. noises, and uh, you know, the, and uh, the rod pod itself was like space age back in the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was already he was already the place to get carp gear for pay lakers because he always sold bait runners and nine foot ugly sticks, which I know everybody uses bait casters now, but yeah. bait casters wasn't used out in, oh, here in oh, Central oh. Indiana it was all until 2004, 2005. I mean, everybody just used Shimano bait runners and nine foot ugly sticks, and yeah. Jimmy always had that kind of stuff. He was the only guy in town where you could go get that kind of gear. So yeah. when he started selling other carp gear, it was just, you know, it's just a natural thing for him to do, you know. 
because he always sold stuff for every kind of fishing, even ice fishing equipment. So oh, yeah. he always had everything. Yeah, yeah, he did. Jeb was always on top of things like that. I hate, I hate this. I hated to see him go. Yeah. You know? Trust me, man. I, I cried when I heard. I cried. There were a lot I of mean, people cried. I, I would I would stop by there at least once a week on the way home from work just to go home. in and just say hi. Yeah. Even if I wasn't going to buy nothing. Yeah, it's like a second home to be. So. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So, uh, so uh, what brought you out of retirement? Well, you know, I fished with my two boys when they was growing up, Charlie Jr. and James. Well, now I got seven grandkids. I got six granddaughters and one grandson, and my grandson's actually a pretty good fisherman. Oh, there you go. Like I said, I fished the last few years with him here and there on camping trips and stuff like that. Right. He fishes for catfish and crappies and bluegills and you know i've been dying to get him out and get him into carp fishing so i'm going to start taking him this year and teach him how to fish so sweet that's awesome uh hey uh, real real quick uh you know let's go ahead uh let's do a, a quick uh contest mm -hmm. uh what uh what's that what what through the thousand uh yeah one through a thousand okay one through a thousand first the first win, uh, first that gets the right number between one and a thousand gonna, gets a, we're gonna do a four, oh, you know, go ahead. a four pound bag of a uh, tournament blend. And you're also going to get uh, a wicked flavor. We're going to give you sour power. Sour, sour power. power. Yep. Shout so, out to, uh, go ahead and pick your number. Which that you wanted. And, I need to stop by the uh, chili meat, Charlie. I mean, yeah, the yeah. I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I might try to make it if you I can. It. Yeah, heck yeah, <laughs> love to see you there. Bring the wife. Yep, bring the wife. How's she been doing? Look, they're already coming. doing good. <laughs> doing good. Yeah. Just uh, join the grandkids. Yeah, me and Tia talk about you guys all the time. Or, matter of fact, uh, Tia said something. Uh, Charlie, it says Charlie and his yeah. wife Tammy are amazing people. There you go. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah, she'll she'll probably come out and fish with me here and there this year also. Yeah. But, and then uh, also back in the day too, uh, Jim started the uh, uh, was it uh, big bank fishing system. Yeah, BFS. Yeah, BFS. Yeah, BFS. And it's basically, I think he bought a lot of it. It's a little bit more lower quality. But I'll tell you the truth, it's a great product for a, a carp angler to start out, just at, you know, first start it out. And then yeah, I, I know Doyle has the BFS alarm that he had for probably four or five years. Oh, I still got some of my old ones. And they were like 20 bucks a piece, and I paid like $150 a piece for my alarm. So, yeah, I think mean, that's. They were cheap, but they, you know, you could get some, get some miles out of them. Yeah, I think, uh, also, yeah, exactly. They're pretty, uh, pretty good, too. Good quality and loud. Wow. 46 on BFS grills and runs. Ricky Massa, Ricky Massa said, he said his uncle got uh, his 40 off of BMF, uh, oh, yeah. BMF runs. I started out with, uh, when I met you guys, I started out with uh, uh, beef sticks, nine foot beef sticks. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jim set me up. Uh, and then, uh, but I did have the uh, 2600 Shimano reels. My first 12 foot rods were actually the original Fox Warrior rods. Oh, nice. They were, they were out 25 years ago. I still, I don't have them. My son James has Somebody was close. I ain't gonna say no one. Somebody was close. My my wife Tammy, she actually has Gilbert Hudson like, stick with her rods. She's got three of those. I, yeah, I still those are those ones. are hard to find. I still yeah. got the one with the and, microwave loop, and, uh, <laughs> the microwave uh, eye. And and, and they're good. they look brand new. They're awesome. Oh, so wow. well, they they pretty much just set the last eight years. So they're they're really good set. I'll never forget when we was on our way to Del Hollow and Gilbert lost. Man, he lost so much stuff off the top of his vehicle, man. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. 
but uh, you've been Gilbert's over. got plenty of gear. Don't let him fool you. Oh, I know. Oh, for does. sure. I'm sure. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Go ahead. When the boys first started fishing with me full time in 2004, we all belonged to the Capital City Conservation Club. You guys know where that is? I about? know exactly yeah, where I've been a member. My dad's still a member now. Well, we was out there fishing, and my, my, my youngest boy, James, was like eight or nine. He had just started fishing with us. And Gilbert had a Lincoln Town car. Gilbert knows exactly why I'm going with this story. <laughs> and, and that car had a gigantic trunk on it, and Gilbert had all his gear in there. Gilbert opens the trunk of his car and the son walks up and sees all Gilbert's gear in the back of the car. And just as serious as he says, Are you rich? <laughs> <laughs> he had all the gear. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Gilbert Hugsley is the one that discovered Del Hollow, right? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'll tell, tell you a story about that. Oh, I know, I know your story, but go ahead. Tell me. Yeah, yeah. He, he's been real keen on telling everybody how he discovered that, but he wasn't even going to fish down there. Yeah. He's like, oh, there's no carp in there. It's a small mouth lake. I'm like, Gilbert, I'm telling you, if there's small mouth in there, there's going to be big carp in there. I remember the story. Carp, there's, there's, there's predators. And sure enough, that first day, he, he called me and was sending me pictures of play, and I was, I was amazed. I, I mean, I I knew there was probably carp in there, but I had no idea. And, I mean, that first day, I mean, it was nothing but 30 pounders all day. I couldn't believe it, so, but yeah. yeah I think and I that, still haven't gotten to fish here, James. Uh, yeah, I think the way the story also went too, that you guys were both were talking, and he, was going to go on a trip with his family on a houseboat. Yeah. yeah. And, and he wasn't planning on taking his fishing gear. And you, no, he wasn't taking nothing. You talked to him about it and said, are you serious? You're not you're going to Dale Hollow and not take your fishing gear? Are you crazy? For what yeah. the, I heard the story went. <laughs> and, then, uh, uh, and then he started and said, okay, I'll take it. You know, you know, like, like I said, it's yeah. like a small mouth. Man, normally you guys done smack it. Why and, you know, uh, but he went down there. Uh, of course, of course, Gilbert didn't discover the place. But it's like Columbus discovering the uh, United States. But yeah, he <laughs> is. He is the one that probably oh, yeah. told other carp anglers, that, "Hey, guys, there's carp in this lake." Yeah, and, and under and he, 300. And he under the, he 300. Go down there the night before. So we can be there anywhere they were going to be. Yeah, so. Setting up to go swimming He's and stuff, so <laughs> he wouldn't have done that. He probably might have never even caught anything. But right. You know how it is down there. You kind of got to find the fish and bring them in. So. so if you kind of think about it, it was kind of like, you're the one kind of started it. You get, you know, the whole, everybody going to Dead Hollow. It's all, it's all about you now. Yeah, I know. You think everybody get together yeah. and just. They should bring like, me and my wife a house boat for two weeks. Yeah, they should build like a statue a right, right off, off the side of the Del Hall. You hey, know, you better Del watch Hall. it. Hey, uh, you know, Team Fish Fighter knows a lot of people. You never know. You might just get blessed with a free trip down there. You never know. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, man, uh, heck yeah. The Billy like, De Haven? What? The legend. That's the legend the himself. Oh, no, let me. Oh, Oh man, we sorry, Billy. We ain't giving away no hair gel tonight, man. Uh, that was last week. You was supposed to be here gel. last week, Billy. Does he still run Indy Lake? Yeah, yes, he, he does, still runs man. Indy Lake. Yes, he does. I, I I drive a garbage truck and I've picked up this trash can plenty of times. So yeah. Do you kick I it? I should have went in and tried to see if he was there, and I never did. But I'd always think uh, about it. When you I hey, you want to you want. To, He's, he, you know, he's a very, very early bird, so you got to catch him. Mean. Yeah, well, he, I mean, you, most time you catch him there in the morning time. That's, that's yeah. you know. I haven't really. talked to Bill in a while. Yeah, uh, I'm sure he's around. I was, I hear hopefully, um, hopefully he's got a load of buffs on the way or something. Uh, I, I hear about Billy all the time. I see pictures of him and his son going fishing. You know, yeah, uh, he does. Uh, down. Yeah, they've yeah. been they've been hunting here a lot here lately. Hell yeah. A little fin ball, a little yeah. fin ball getting big. It's well, cute. Uh, I know the fish out there like the rice bait. 
Yeah, Billy just asked how you was doing, Charlie. Doing good, man. Doing good. I uh, I had a little, I had a little fight with cancer last year. I had vocal cord cancer. Oh no, kidding. I'm sorry to hear about that. But uh, I'm fine now. I had to do radiation, had surgery, and then done radiation, and I've been going back to the doctor every two months for the last year, and I'm still good. So. Okay. Okay. Woo. Glad you're back on time. Well, that that that's kind of the reason I want to get back. You know, last year. I, uh, I, when I met Gilbert, he was the same age I am, and Gilbert's been fishing hard for 20 years. Yeah. So, and he was kind of like my dad on the fishing bank, and uh, he kind of helped me raise the boys on the fishing bank, and, and I'm looking forward to him getting the fish with my grandson. I, got a I know he'll get a, he'll get a kick out of that. So. So, uh, how old is your grandson? He's 10. Uh, you know, it's uh, my son's nine, and. Uh, He's, yeah, I can't believe how big he is. Oh my God, that he died. You know, oh, that's funny. You got to, we, as a matter of fact, me and Tia was going over one of our old videos because he used to be on Team Fish Fighters years ago. As a matter of fact, you and yeah, he was like two years old. Yeah, but, uh, you and Billy David. Actually, he was one. Uh, yeah, and uh, how long ago? Was. Yeah, and we had one of our first, first video shoots, one of them, over at Indy uh, Indy Lakes, and yep. uh, we. Uh, uh, of course, my son was there, you know, and Tia's holding, and I caught that carp out of Indy Lakes, and and Tia's like said, "Hey, let let him touch it." So that's the, actually the first time he ever touched a carp was over at <laughs> Indy Lakes, and you guys were yeah. right there, and I got yeah, I got great. a video of that, so that, that was one of my uh, uh, proud moments. So, oh yeah, but yeah, he's a uh, yeah, that was, that was kind of awesome back in the day. Though, uh, hey, you're you're one of the original ones that's first that started with Team Fish Fires. Uh, I only got one uh, person that's still hanging in there. It's the original, and that's Jeremy Burdine. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. So. All right, so everybody. It, it's just six of you now. I don't know. It's twelve. Harrison, there's another team going. We started yeah, we up got at PA. Six in PA. Uh, oh, okay. Sinister Six Team Fish Fighters. Yes, we got, got yeah, we got twelve. We here. actually have three spots open. Yeah, right we actually have three spots open. We, you know, we're we're looking to fill before the new year. Uh, uh, so we can bring them on for the new year. But oh, you say we got a winner? Yes, we do have, we a, have winner. a winner. Man, yucks. Who is it? Who's the, who's the, who's the lucky winner? Man, they them boys, man. Is it the Root Boys again? It, they them boys. Jeez. I'm trying to tell you, boy, they winning everything. Guys, you can't. Uh, Y'all gonna have to put a stop to it. They taking my money. They taking your money. Taking, they taking everybody's money in the bank. Bait my bait's not, you know, cheap, guys. I got. Uh, I, I said my bait's not cheap. I'm getting this. No, stuff. man, don't worry about it. They, they got you covered. They about to start selling it. Oh, okay. They about to start selling root juice and yams and all that. Yep. The root juice. <laughs> now, nah, congratulations, Shane. Shane hit it. One fourteen. 114 was the number. 114 was the number. Congratulations. Who was it? Shane Fitzpatrick. Okay. Congratulations. Keep so, chain. Congratulations. You, uh, you chain. want a bag of uh, tournament, one free bag of tournament blend and, and uh, sour sour power wicked flavors. Uh, give us about maybe another good 10 to 15 minutes and uh, we'll throw another game out there for you guys. Yep. So, but. Uh, Wow, the legend! I'm talking. I'm talking to the legend right now, man. So let me ask you a question. Um, so, are so when you say you're coming out of retirement, is that like are you going to be fishing? Or like, are you coming back to the you bay to lake scene, or are you coming more to yeah. the wild water? Probably wild water. No, I, I, we'll, we'll probably just fish fish wild waters. I'm I'm probably going to take him to just a bunch of spots I know where I can catch fish, yeah. and uh, you know, I can if I go to the bay like this year, it might be once or twice. Right. And if I go, I'll probably go with Kevin Thorpe. Oh, Kevin Thorpe. He, he's always driving me nuts to go oh fishing with him. He drives and, everybody uh, nuts. I'll uh, I'll get up at I'll get up at three in the morning and start boiling some catch up in my wife's best saucepan and uh, take take Kevin out there and he likes. Right here it is, Shane. Hey. So, I, uh, Zach and him came over and I forgot to put this in their bag. And I knew, I was like, man, I could have swore uh, uh, Shane had another bag. Shane had one bag. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, so he's got this and then he's got that one. 
and then he has the bottle of flavor too. Throw these bags like brown like car cocaine. Whew. Wow. So, uh, uh, I got a feeling he's going to win again. Uh, probably. <laughs> probably. And, uh, man, I got this coat, dude. <laughs> man, I want to see you guys at this chili, man. It would be awesome to see you guys. This place is huge. It's, it, 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 yeah, we're going to have a lot of room. A lot um, of room. Uh, Where are you having it at? It's uh, over there at the... UAW over there. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you're fine. The UAW off Tibbs. Right, oh, right, okay. Pretty close to Rolly's Royce. I got you, Shane. I got you all the way together, bud. We, I got you. I appreciate yep. you watching, Shane. Yep. For real. I'm getting ready to put the post out. And, uh, I don't know if Zach told you, but sorry. No, fine, fine. We're trying to get you guys on the show, man, on the, on the 13th. Yeah, yeah they've got the, 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 it's going to be February 3rd. I'm getting ready to make the post out. Of course, we're going to get the vendors all out. Uh, we got we get vendors from all over parts of the states here. Just yeah. coming here. We get people from Chicago, yeah. Michigan. Yeah. North, so most of the time, North Carolina. Places are definitely going to be packed. Lots of good deals. And of course, we got you know we'll have a lot of stuff uh, <laughs> for sale there. You know, uh, you know, if you're looking for something else for your grandson, you know, I'm pretty sure they'll have it there there too. Yeah, yep. definitely want to come and get your deals on. Free chili, your free drinks. I mean, uh, you know, it's a good company. You know, yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, I think the first, probably the first three or four years, we basically just met up somewhere in my house. I remember right, and yeah. we just it was basically just playing things out for the year, and then when Jimmy got real involved with us, we started having it there at the Sportsman Hall. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last time I went, it, you know, and this was eight years ago, it was big, you know, with all the all the vendors and stuff like that. So it's always pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Jim, what do you mean, got any Chinese bread? Chinese bread. Panko. Oh, I think they're asking you that, James. As a matter of fact, uh, I did. Uh, Phil. Lucas just asked me for a big old bag of. Uh, yeah, because he's probably. About, it's because he's probably about to go. He's coming by to buy it tomorrow. That's the only bag I got. That's. He's buying it off of me. Yeah, he's about to go to North Carolina. Oh, that's why everybody's going. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's why. I mean, that's probably that's why he wants it that way. You know what I mean? Uh, so, uh, real quick, uh, Charlie, what's uh, what are your dream lakes you would like to go to? That I haven't been to. Hey, or, or you would like to. Uh, well, of course, Del Hollow. Del Hollow. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to go. I'd like to go back to Texas uh, and uh, Fish Town Lake again. Uh, I've always wanted to go down the Tennessee River. Uh, Actually, before Del Hollow got big, uh, Tennessee River was kind of the place to go to catch forties. And I know Rick was going down there quite a bit, and uh, but I never got a chance to go down there. Uh, Tennessee River. That be you know that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you been there it's before? Like, like and I'd love to go out to California and fish, or, or go to go to out east and fish with Scott Osmond. Some of the places he fishes at. Oh yeah, yeah. They hit some monsters. Does anybody out there watching right now have any questions for the Carpenter? The Carpenter. How'd you come up with that name? That handle. You know, I don't know. I think I just thought about the Terminator. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and it went from there. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, I want to get you another good question here real quick. I, I won't answer any questions from Gilbert. So. <laughs> Well, there's five questions from Gilbert. He's probably past the bedtime now. Yeah, no, he played, he played, fell asleep watching. <laughs> Had that right, Gil. Gilbert. He's, he's probably passed out drinking many insurers. All right, here we go. <laughs> what kind of advice can you give on the chubby your swim to bring the carp in? Well, what I used to do in tournaments, I uh, would make up my pack mate, and I'd always make up a double batch. And as soon as I get there, before I even now, I don't, I don't, I have twelve foot rods, but I don't have twelve foot rods, so I can cast one hundred and fifty yards because I don't think you need to. 
Right. I catch most of my fish at 50 yards or less. See, that's how and I, don't, I agree. And I don't like to cast out any farther than I can either yeah. shoot some corn out with a slingshot or, or throw <laughs> out some balls of bait with a baiting spoon. So basically, I chum an area about the size of half of a basketball court okay. with about with about a gallon of, of uh, egg bait. Just make up small balls and, you know, about a half gallon of corn. And then I'll start setting up my gear. Right. And then I just, I chum a little bit throughout the day. Okay, I could dig it. I could dig it. Uh, oh, jeez. So, what is, what, can you give out a, what's one of your, oh, if I remember right, you used to use smucker, a lot of smuckers stuff, didn't you? Jelly? I, I, I like, I, I don't really flavor none of my pack bait. I, I, I like dipping stuff. I like yeah, that's dipping, what I mean. my, yeah, dipping my hook bait before I pack on my, my pack bait. Even when I use the hair rig, I'm talking about wild fishing here. But right. I, I done it pay like it also. Right. And then... I hardly ever flavored my bait. I like to dip it, and what I used all the way up until I stopped fishing mainly was grits. Even in the wild, I used grits. I used to use soybean meal, but I just really like grits. It's easy to make. It's, it, it holds flavor well. Not that I flavor it, but I, I always dip it, and, I, and one of my favorite things to dip it in is uh, Smucker's Caramel Ice See, Cream. See, I knew it. I knew it was Smucker's. And I've done that. I've done that for years, Damn. for probably eight, not the last eight or nine years I fished. That's what, that's all I used was grits. I either used grits as a pack, I either used soybean meal, or I either used cornbread. And I almost always dipped it in Smucker's Caramel. <laughs> uh, my hook, sometimes I'd, I'd, I'd dip my hook bait in there. And as far as hair rips, my hook bait is always too and the way I rig it on a hair rig, I uh, I run them up the hair rig uh, up and down, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. From top to bottom. I, I used to fish sweet corn and then put a piece of artificial corn on the bottom where the stopper is, but I, d I don't even use real bait anymore. I just I stick with pop-up sweet corn. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. That's yeah. Not now... Now, Palex is a little different, you know, I, I I did use rice a lot, which is flavored. Yeah. Uh, I did use Superior flavorings for that. I, I was always a big fan of Superior and R&W. And uh, I would use Corn Pop, Corn Pops, and what kind of pack bait I use. But uh, I, I like to dip my, my puffs and pops in something before... I cast out, you know, uh, mustard was a big favorite of mine. Mayonnaise, mustard. barbecue sauce. The old mustard ball, boy. The old mustard so, ball. And, and a lot of that stuff I learned off of Bobby Hubbard before before I started using uh, uh, corn puffs and corn puffs back in dough ball days. Bobby Hubbard always had an old Coleman core. <laughs> Remember the old Coleman cores that had, yeah. like, the latch on it to keep raccoons The big out? green ones? He, he had one of those, and at the bottom of it was a bunch of open containers of, like, barbecue sauce and mustard and mayonnaise. And oh, wow. He would always take his dough ball and dip down in there before he cast out. So that's something I kind of learned off of him and, and Tom Brooks, Mr. Big from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. He taught me a lot about flavoring, flavoring pops and puffs and stuff like that. Remember bait, bait, the bait in there? Uh, uh, bait runner. Oh, yeah. Bait rudder, bait rudder. Uh, what what would you say the craziest bait you've ever used for carp fishing is? Uh, just a hamburger and Limburger cheese. Uh, that that was big out at Paylex back in the nineties, but I, I hated it. I hated using it. I never really caught a lot on it. That's and bad one for time catfish, I accidentally it? made some and left it in a cooler in my car. Oh lord. And, uh, yeah, my, my wife is sitting here looking at me with her hand on her face right now because she remembers that. <laughs> so, you just brought yeah, back a flashback for her. Uh. <laughs> now, with your wife sitting there, does she fish? Tammy. 
heavy. It's heavy. Yeah, the last the last two or three years that I fished, she started coming with me because of the boys. The boys, you know, got married and had kids and stuff and stopped fishing with me. Yeah. So she'll she'll probably fish with me a little bit this year when my grandson's not with me. There you go. Well, I'm excited to see you guys come out there. Hope to uh, oh, yeah. see but get some pictures up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I, 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 I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my grandson to a lot of Gilbert and I Gilbert and I fish together every Saturday from March to November for ten years together. The only time I didn't fish with Gilbert was when he went went out of state to fish with somebody or in a tournament. Was and you can ask Gilbert, we fished so many different places one time. And either just caught a few or didn't catch any and never went back. And there's a lot of places that I've been to that I'd like to go back and try again. When uh, Gilbert went off to another state to fish with somebody, was you kind of jealous? Was you sad? No, not, no, not really. Not really. You know, I mean, did you didn't have mixed emotions or anything? He, he yeah, was you at that you age didn't feel replaced. <laughs> to do that, so. <laughs> you know, so I had to stick around, so. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I'd always get calls from him and he'd give me updates and, you know, so I was always cheered him on. Nice, nice. You guys out there watching, um, we appreciate you guys watching. If you guys could share this live for us, we appreciate it, we appreciate it. Let's do another game. You want to do another giveaway? We'll do another giveaway. What's, what, what do? What's Wild that? Oats. Wild Oats. Wild and Oats. Four pound bag of Wild Oats. This is a four pound bag, guys. And. And berry squid. Berry, we'll berry squid, squid with wild oats. The squid berry. From, uh, from we're going to do Bates. the same. One to, one. One to a thousand. One or, through I'm sorry, two. Zero to a thousand. One through two. One so, through two. No, so, what? huh? What? No, stop, James. <laughs> You're going to give them all. They're going to be saying uh, 1,642. <laughs> zero to a thousand. Zero to a thousand. Zero to a thousand. Zero and thousand. you guys can go now. Zero is not really a number, I don't think, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, Lord. Man, I my... got stuffed. What else we got? And like I said, please share this live. Please share this live. One to a thousand. One to a thousand. What do you, uh... I was about to ask you a question. Oh, you want to take a question? Come yeah. Here. So what would you say your most craziest experience? Shane, you're on the right track. I'm going to keep it real. Oh, my God. Uh, so was William. He's so <laughs> uh, So what would you say your craziest experience is? Oh, man. I don't know. I, I don't know if I had crazy experiences or just funny, funny things that happened while we were well, that, works, that works for us, too. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about Gilbert. Do you guys know it? Know a guy named Nick Bright? Yep. Hey, yeah. Uh, yep. A lot of people. A lot of people know him. Well, when he was a when he was a kid, he come out and fished with us at the Capital City Conservation Club. Mm -hmm. And this was this was the first year we were all really together, starting to fish. And uh, he comes out, and you know, he he's using nine foot nine foot rods, and uh, he. He cast out and... Hang on, I don't mean to stuff. cut you off. I'm, I, I gotta stop these guys. We already have a winner. Uh, um, wow. I've seen the same person. Uh, you know, I've seen three people with the number. Sorry, I want to I go ahead and stop them there because I don't want it to get too far up and then we had to go back and then like, oh, well, I said it first. So the first person that uh, had said it, the number was 222 and it was Chris... Hang on, uh, Chris Braddy. Oh, okay. Yep, I'm going up there to like it now. Because it was it was Chris, and then William Bowman had said it, and then uh, uh, Shane had said it right after him, and then somebody else said it right after that too. But congrats, congratulations, Chris. You are the winner. Sorry to cut you off, uh, Carpenter, but you can go ahead and finish now. Yeah. Uh, so, so Nick's out there and, and, and casts out his night for rods. You know, he, he does this crazy little little thing like 
good in these past years. So, you know, he, he got 75 yards behind Cut Rod. So Gilbert's like, all right, let's see you. Let's see you pass with 12 foot Rod. So Gilbert there do his rod and then pass out. They probably put it on the 200 yard team. So Gilbert's just give that. I'll try it. And, and Gilbert's, you know, gets kind of the other thing about it. Do the pendulum swing and Gilbert wears back and, and gives it all all he's got. Throws it out there and we're all looking wait and wait and wait and take it just so far out there we can't even see it from right there two, and flash two, 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 two. Gilbert says one there before he can say the next word. A four ounce sinker hits him right square on the top of his head. Oh. And puts a dip in his head the size of a crater. And we all start laughing. And uh, it, it was funny, but at the same time, it was <laughs> it is pretty, I'll tell you another crazy, I'll tell you a crazy story that happened out there. Uh, we fished with a guy named Carl out there. Carl who? I, is he still around, James? Carl? Uh, Carl and Bill, that they, they started, they fished out in Hubbard's a lot. Uh, a couple of older gentlemen. Gilbert would know Carl's last name, but he was, he was going to bring him out there at the conservation club, but he was down to, on one end of the lake talking with us, and he, he hears that he's getting a run down on, down on his end, so he runs over there. Time he gets over there, that car had run his line out so far that it had run it all the way out to the knot <laughs> on the beginning of your spool. Oh my God. And the fish was still on there. He caught that fish. Wow. There was 300 yards of line on there. That fish ran all the way to the other side of the lake, like an eight pound car. And he was able to get that fish in. That was the craziest thing I ever seen. Uh, wow. You got a question for him? Or what we do get? We got a question? No, you're all right. Oh, do you, now, uh, what do you fish? Do you like to fish at nights or days? Days. I've never, I've never liked nights. So yeah. I, I, I know it's different times of the year. But I've always been a Saturday guy. I, I, I get up when I fish. I get up at o'clock in the morning, and uh, you know, try to get out there about an hour before daylight and get set up. Right. And uh, and I, I, I catch, I catch in the morning. I've I caught it noon. You know, I've caught it since then. Uh, I, a couple times a year, I might go for a week somewhere or something like that. Uh, Lake Zorn, I fish boats out there a lot. Uh, I did a lot back in Bay Lake days. I, I did a lot of weekends, like 24 hour things, stuff like that. But I don't know, just just always be Bay fishing. Huh. I guess that's why I get so much of Gilbert. And it was harder to block it. I think Gilbert's the same one, always just part of the day, the day gotch so. stuff. Whereas, you know, Rick, Rick's one of the things that we discussed. I know, you know, Spike's, Spike's going out and staying out for three or four days at a time. And just, I, I just don't think I ever had the energy to do that, really. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, of all the carp anglers, well, at least the Hoosier Carpers. What's uh, some of the carp anglers you miss fishing with the most? I know it's been, I know it's been eight years since last time you went with fish, but yeah. I mean, like you got Marshall Burba, Rick, but uh, I always enjoyed fishing with Stan Geidel. Uh, great Stan. guy. Yeah. And uh, Stan was the other uh, guy that was right there with uh, Gilbert Hugsley. Yeah. yeah. Stan, uh, Dell Anderson. Del you know, he's gone now. I always yeah. enjoyed fishing with him. He always cracked me up. Uh, Del Weaver. Del Weaver always cracked me up. Uh, tell man, him, just, tell just him to stop walking around. What's that mean? Say what? Gilbert said tell him to stop walking around. Stop walking around. Stop walking around. Yeah, I don't know. Like Carl, I, I, Carl Hamill thought it was pretty funny. Oh. I don't know. I don't <laughs> Did know. Did you pace a lot or something like that? Uh, no, not really. 
Did somebody like a, else that you guys was fishing with walk around or something? You walk no. Around? I, I'm not that I'm sure Gilbert, he's watching. He's probably going to put it in there when he's talking about maybe. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the phone is the way to cut this out or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my, my next question is, um, when you go and you fish a new swim, what do you look for to make sure that there's carp in the area? Uh, just a lot of times you can see him jumping and just see him surfing. So, um, mostly that. Uh, if there's locals there asking, if there's guys on boats, he's a boat picker. Uh, but those ask fishermen, you can ask them if they can tell you if they can search carp in their area, especially if they see them spawn and things like that. No, he's talking about his phone. Yeah. He's talking about your phone. Yeah. You're I mean, walking around with your phone. No, no, I'm staying still. No, he, no, but. Back in that day, you probably had like the old 80s style flip phone, didn't you? No, he's talking What's about that? Right. He's oh, yeah. Right <laughs> cutting in now. Oh. Yeah, they're just having problems. Oh, I think hearing you. You're, okay. cut, you're cutting now in and out, so they're thinking that you're moving around or, you know. Okay, I get it. I get it. He's only, he can only be still for so long, Gilbert. Damn. How's that? Is that better? I took the speaker off. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey Gilbert, try to get a hold of uh, uh, back, uh, World Classic Bait if they want to come to the Chili Me. The Chili Me. They might be. Hey, they might. Uh, they might just send Gilbert uh, some stuff and maybe Rick's Gilbert. Like Gilbert. Yeah, or Rick or Gilbert. They might do it that way. Yeah. But, uh, so you still got all your carp fishing stuff? Yeah, I actually went through everything last weekend to see, uh, kind of do an inventory. Yeah. And um, I, um, my uh, my waist sling was rotted out. Uh, all my flavors, I had to throw all my flavors away, which that's fine. I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna order some fresh. And speaking to Carl, I'm probably gonna get some of his stuff. I, I kind of listened when he was on there and. Kind of uh, interested in trying some of his stuff out. So Carl got some good stuff. Yeah, he does have some good flavors for sure. Some good stuff. But, uh, but uh, does anybody else watching have any questions for the carpenter? But uh, yeah, thank you, Gilbert. We appreciate that. I saw it. If you remember too, uh, uh, there was that CAG site. And we have, and that was also kind of fill fill elated, uh, branched off with the Huger Carpers Carp Talk uh, website, and uh, yeah. which uh, that you know they always had communication thing going on with them. This now you fished the CCC tournaments before, right? No, no, the only, the only one I went to was the one that was here. Oh, really? Okay, they yeah, Jim I, know, I know Rick fished. I think Rick's fished all of them. Okay. And Gilbert's been to several, but man, I just I never left the state very much. The only time I fished out of the state for carp was when uh, I went to the ATC with Gilbert and some of the guys in I think it was 2006, and then in 2007 or 2008 I went to Washington D.C. And fishing the DC fishing. Okay. Uh, back in the day, who's your you know through the tournaments and all that stuff like the the Hoosier Carper uh, Tournament Trail and all that stuff. Who's what, who's your some of your biggest competitors back in the day? Uh, it's going to sound like a broken record, but Gilbert. Uh, yeah, it is a broken record. <laughs> so it, it was always them guys. Uh, uh, there was a, there was another guy the first two or three years. He was a black gentleman. His name was Terry something. McGraw. Yeah, Terry McGraw. Yes, McGraw. Now, yes. I think Terry was second place that first year that I won. He, uh, matter of fact, he, uh, he he was always in the top three. Yeah, he uh, from uh, Team Stringtown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Team Stringtown. Uh, matter of fact. Uh, He's been working with me at Westlake for about uh, six oh, years. 
uh, the, but then he got he became a supervisor and went to another property. But I heard that you know he's still around, uh, but yeah. he's, his health is kind of not doing too good because uh, he he ended up with COVID, and yeah. uh, that kind of affected him pretty hard. Uh, hit him yeah. pretty hard in some ways, and, uh, and he was actually in a coma for almost two months. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, but, oh, uh, who else? The Steven Brandenburg. What up, Jeremy? Remember him? Nope. Charlie? Yes, sir. You remember uh, Steven Brandenburg? Yes, I do. Yeah, he was part of that, he was part of that team, Team Strict Town. He, uh, okay. Yeah, he still comes to some of the White, White River Invitationals tournaments and Fall Carp Classic. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh... Chris Braddy says, what do you like to use for hook baits the most? Ooh, good question. Uh, for Bay Lake or for Wild Water? Or both? Uh... Go ahead and give us both. Yeah, go ahead and give us both. Uh, Wild Water, like I said, I, I usually just use... Two pieces of artificial pop up corn. I, I like the bigger the bigger pieces. I make my hair long enough to where uh, uh, you know it, it comes just right off the bend of the hook. Uh, I hardly ever use any kind of I, I hardly ever use boilies or anything like that. Uh, as far as pay lakes, when I do go, I use either I don't use beads anymore. Uh, I use either puffs or pops and it depends on what bait I'm using as far as a, a corn puff I use that with uh, I would use that with grits oats uh, and uh, and rice okay. and a corn pop I would use with uh, millet and uh, soybean milk huh. and uh, usually uh, I, I like to dip my corn pops. I'd usually bring things I could dip them in, just all kinds of different stuff. And then right. as far as corn pops, or I'm sorry, corn puffs, uh -huh. I like to I like to flavor those and bake them in the microwave as to how I used to always prepare those. And that's just something I learned from Mr. Big from North Carolina. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'll tell you a story about him. When I, when I first met him, it was on a... It was on a message board, and this was in the early days of the internet, you know, 2003. It was just, uh, it, it, I think it was called uh, North Carolina Pay Lake or something. Mike Reimers would remember because he was on there also. Right. And, you know, he's talking to me and, and Mike about Indiana and Ohio stuff, and, you know, I'm telling him, you know, what we use, all we use is soybean mill, and he's telling me about all these different baits and, cook baits and stuff so he wanted to see how rice would work in indiana so he actually sent me from north carolina the first time i used any pack bait other than soybean mill at indy lakes yeah. he actually sent me a cardboard box a package in the mail and inside the package was instructions on how to make rice bait uh. and what to buy he, you know, he told me what size and brand of ketchup and, and rice to buy. But in there, he had a mason jar. And the mason jar was completely full. And the mason jar was two combinations of superior flavors, which I can't tell you because <laughs> it's his recipe. Right. Uh, it was two combinations of superior flavoring, moonshine, and a brand of hot sauce that at that time was not available up here. Now it is. Wow. And he gave me the instructions on how to make it, how to cook it, how to prepare it, when to put the flavoring in. He also put a baggie of corn pop, corn puffs in there that were flavored. Because at that time, you couldn't find them up here. You still can. Every once in a while, you can find them in the health food section in a grocery store. But most of the time, you got to order them off somebody like Betty's Kitchen or something like that. At least it eight was years ago. But he actually sent me that stuff. So I go out to Indy Lakes with this stuff. Yeah. And I was out of bait in an hour. Wow. I, I mean, literally. So, and he made the exact exact amount of puffs. I ran out of puffs and, and 
and, and rise at the same time. Yeah. I'm out here. There's there's 20 guys on the lake. Nobody's catching nothing. I caught 30 fish in like an hour or two. Just I couldn't keep one rod on the on the on the on the on the pod. <laughs> and but I did bring some soybean meal, so I thought, well, I'll just have to go back to using my soybean meal. So I start using my soybean meal with with a bead, and I'm not getting nothing like everybody else. <laughs> so I think, well, Mr. Big told me try a, a Kellogg's corn pop with the soybean meal. So I took my bead off, changed hooks, put a corn pop on. Immediately, man, just started catching fish after fish after fish. That's what I'm Now, about. at this time, and maybe Mike Reamers can chime in if he's on here, but the Richmond guys were starting to use some of those baits, but at Indy Lakes, it was still just mostly soybean milk. I think some guys were using chow in the winter, but other than that, and some guys were using oats here and there, here and there but, like, I don't think anybody was using rice, but... But pretty much, those are the those are the hook baits I use. Right. Remember the Bosnians? Yes, sir. I you know if you was to ask me, uh, my Mount Rushmore wild carpers, Jamal would be on that. Yeah. He, he had a big influence on me when I met him. As yeah. far as the influence he had on me was uh, his uh, the gear he used. Yeah. Uh, he's the reason I use nothing but Fox. Gear. Oh, gotcha. And he's kind of moved away from it, but I use fox rods, pods, nets, everything. And uh, he was just a big influence on me with that kind of stuff. He showed up at the uh, Chili Beat last year. Was he there? Yep. Yep. Yeah, good. We all had. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. We all had uh, a bunch of shots though, very together. Very competitive. Whenever, oh, yeah. Whenever we would have fish ins, he was always very competitive. Shannon Pearson. Remember him? Yeah. Yep. Uh, man, there's a lot of good carp carp haters back in the day. Yeah. I'm the uh, I like to tell people I'm the Forrest Gump of carp fishing in Indiana. <laughs> I, I might have not been the best, but I was always there when something big happened. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I know exactly what you're saying. I got to see a lot of cool stuff happen. So over the years, yeah. We've seen a lot of things change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you got any more questions? Uh, about, I mean, that's, we went through our list. Yeah, pretty much. So, anybody, yeah. you, know. you got any questions, Charlie? Yeah, I got a question for all your listeners. Yeah, mm -hmm. go. Since I haven't fished in eight years, why is everybody taking pictures of their fish while they're standing in the water with hip waders on? <laughs> that's a question for Rick. Does Rick do that? Yes. I, I, I think a lot of people do it because you know it, it, I think it just so I think they do it for oh, protection of the fish mainly 95 I think the fish got bigger okay yeah the fish is up yeah I mean now you know days, people are catching 30s and 40s like they ain't nothing yeah nowadays, like you know especially I mean? at Dale Hollow they're uh uh and it's just about you know it's about getting that release too you know what I mean? I you know, they're, 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 yeah, you get that. Uh, that's what that I love about the away. wild yeah. side of it. There's just a lot more passion. I know there's passion in the Pay Lake too, but it's just become more yeah. about it's it's more about tournament style fishing more than anything in the Pay Lake world than what it was when I came up. Yeah, fishing. you remember uh, the Gilbert Hugsley and the Rick Slicker stare at the at the fish at the carp. Oh yeah, oh yeah. My, my son James would always take a picture like that. I still the gaze, do. the gaze. The, what's what? And, uh, the he got that from Gilbert. Yeah, he's good at it. Yeah, Gilbert's Gilbert's the man. Marshall Burba. Yeah, Marshall does does the Gilbert stare. The Gilbert Gilbert stare. That's what, that's what I say. <laughs> I would call it the Gilbert stare. I like that. But. Uh, well, I guess we're coming kind of pretty much close to the end of the show, man. So yeah. Okay. Wow. We appreciate you, man. Um, man, the legend. I want. I'm, I'm looking forward to see you with your waders on outside uh, Outlet Lake. And if, if you see me in the water in, with a Gilbert stare, with a car, with a car, it's because the <laughs> the fish stole my wallet. <laughs> that would be the only reason. Hey, I, I got. Before we go, I got another story. To yeah, tell go ahead. You. Tell us, please. Just to show you how how much carp fishing's meant to me in my life. Uh, at one of the Turtle Creek fishings, do you remember a guy named Jay Sims? Yes, yes. Well, he, he's passed on. He oh, I didn't died know that. at a young age, unfortunately. 
Yeah. But my son Charlie married his daughter, and they met at a Turtle Creek fish in. Uh, uh, the last the last year that Charlie fished with me a lot, uh, Jay brought his daughter out there, who is my daughter in law now, Brandy. She's the mother of five yeah, of my grandchildren. I remember, but I remember that. they actually met at the Turtle Creek Fish Inn, and now they're, they've been married for over 10 years. Isn't that crazy? I, so, I remember yeah. we went to the social at uh, Turtle Creek. And, uh, yeah. That, maybe you, you tried to went there one time. Yeah, we did. Uh, we but did. that's like years later. Yeah, We got, but, uh, we got lost and everything. Yeah, we went there because the, the special part uh, about Turtle Creek for listeners that don't know... Uh, you go out there and it'd be like 10 degrees outside or you know five below outside but the water is always 70 degrees because it's coming yeah, out of power yeah. plant because it's coming actually out of power the plant. colder the better yeah and uh and you did catch very big fish because there was always a lot of small ones over there yeah at the lake just but, a place for you to hear your alarms go off yeah and basically uh, but yeah, I, I thought it was the coolest place at the time because that's about when I first got into the whole Hoosier Carpers uh, yeah. socials because uh, it's foggy. It's foggy. Yeah, it's you, 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 you can barely see the rod dips. Yeah, you barely. It's, with, the, with the steam coming off the water. It's like it's, it, and, but uh, yeah, it's heavily, uh, got a lot of heavy uh, military stuff over there too. You know? mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Security, sorry, security. That's so. how we actually found got to be able to find it, man. We <laughs> we seen the same cop like twice, and I was like, man, if yeah. I see him again, I'm stopping him. You know, I think and I even called James. I was like, hey, if I see this cop again, I'm stopping. Him. <laughs> I think we only caught a catfish that day, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and I look. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I stopped this. I stopped this cop. And this, and I'm not bullshitting. You can ask James. This cop was like 76 years old. Oh yeah, and he jumped out and had a big old dirty hair on his head, with that Barty flag. Hey, I'm serious, man. He was an old school cat, but he took us right. He, <laughs> hey, he took us right to it. Yeah, he we, we couldn't guy. find it. Yeah, we couldn't. But find he it. jumped out with that big old dirty hair on his leg. Well, I was like, damn, yeah. I see you old school. Yeah, yeah. Old <laughs> pants falling off of him because that big old thing. Yeah. But Charlie, man, we appreciate you being yeah, on the show. Yeah. Um, Good here, yes, sir. sir. Yeah, good, good hearing from you. Glad to see that you're coming out of retirement. Yes. Um, right. I look forward to see the pictures. Yep. Not only that, you know, maybe you had to get together and uh, come to a video shoot or something. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, we can do that. So, we can do that. All right. I think that'd be pretty cool. All right. Thanks again, Charlie. Appreciate you, buddy. All right, guys. Later. Hey, everybody. Charlie Napier, the carbonator. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hope to see you at the chili meet, brother. You know, uh, February 3rd, put it in your calendars. Yeah, we're getting ready to make this post here soon. Probably end up tomorrow, you'll see the post and uh, start contacting it. Uh, we are taking, you know. The, taking all donations, don't matter what it is. And all that stuff. Like, we're just trying to get, you your, know, you know, get your spots ready because uh, this is a show you guys do not want to miss. Yeah, we're going to, you know, we're. To, We've pretty much been doing this for how many years now? This this is the nineteenth annual carp chili meet. Yeah, but oh, I mean, as far as team fish fighters, like on our own, you know, I mean, was this like five, six? I like to say six. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, you know, we, you know, we wouldn't be able to keep doing it if it wasn't for the people that's yeah. like you guys watching and you know the. Yeah. The people that donate, or the flavor companies that donate, you right, know them. Right. Them raffles that you guys, them raffle items that you guys send us, that's how we're really able to keep going. Yeah. Um, you know that's how we buy the landing mats. That's how we pay for the trophies sometimes. Um, you know, like I said, we just we couldn't do it without you. So if you guys know somebody that owns a flavor company or. Yeah. Uh, you know, hooks, whatever it may be, preferably, you know, we would love to see a lot more wild water guys come this year. Yeah. So, uh, I guess we just need to figure out who's going to be that, who's going to bring that stuff. Yeah. We're definitely going to try to get a lot of good carp anglers right there. That's how it's going to be. We sales, appreciate sales, you, Mike. Sales. We really appreciate you so much. You know, as people like yourself and, 
and uh, you know, big Mike Thornburg and Big Money Beepers and Joe Lutz, you know, and all them people, you know, that help us. You know, we wouldn't be who we are without you. I mean, we're always yeah. going to be who we are, yeah. integrity wise. Give back, Thanks. you know, but to be on. able to give back and you guys, you know, we appreciate everybody so, that just helps us and follows yeah. us and and all Keep that stuff. So, there's some, yeah. Give us about more ideas or who you like to see come to the show. Also, uh, ideas that you like for me and Tommy do. If you want to see Tommy stand on his head for a little bit, that's fine. <laughs> I can't uh, do that, bub. I'm not 120 pounds no more. I'm too far. You, you know. know. What you know? You're too big. You want to see him shave his head? Go ahead. It's fine too. Yeah. Or you want to see James eat some more worms? Yeah. Whatever. But, he uh, still ain't found that worm. That's crazy, ain't yeah. it? I told him that that worm's probably crawled up in the back of his head somewhere. Living comfortably. Yeah, you know, that one night crawler. I tell you, it's uh, that night crawler. It was, it was more like eating mud a little bit. Yeah. It was just nothing there, really. Well, I mean, it's, there's nothing just, there, just skin and, and yeah. mud and poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they got toothpaste. But yeah, you know, spread the word about yeah. the chili meat. February 3rd, yep, yep. 2024. It's going down. Um, yep. You know, if you would like to make some chili for the chili cook-off, please do. Free food. You know, this goes out. If you guys would like to bring anything, you know, um, snacks, cupcakes, drinks, what, you know, if you would like to bring something, you're very more than welcome. The more the merrier. This yeah. is definitely... Yeah. Um, it's a good family event, too. Yeah, it's a good family event, yeah. um, you know... Carp anglers. It's like this. It's it's basically it's a kickoff for the new year of carp fishing. You know, a lot of people know once the chili meets here, they know that the season is like yeah. right there. Like it's, right. it's it's peak season at that at that point in time. So you got and to, we're not having it during the yeah uh, the boat sport travel the boat sport travel show. So yeah. I think that's going to help out a little bit too. Plus, you know, with this us having this bigger area, bigger better. Um, Better. The tables ain't gonna be, uh, you know. I don't even think we're gonna even have yeah, tables no. touching. Yeah. Uh, so basically, free food, free drinks, uh, lots of good deals. Uh, yeah. Lots of door prizes. Lots of raffles. So, a lot of raffles. It's it's a win win situation basically, and you know you got good company, and uh, you know the guys just. He Chill said, out there were you 120. Oh man, yeah, I, I used to, trust me, bro, I got pictures. You don't want to see the pictures, you don't want to see the thug that I used to be. <laughs> West side. No, I was south side. Tough side. But nah, man, I, you know, I'm a different person now. I try to be, man, I try to not bring that side out of me. You know what I mean? It's always there, but, you know, it's not, it's not good. So, let's call it. All right. Well, hang on, man. We what, 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 uh, what, you know, Cart Pro, Texas Guide Service. Oh, yeah. Uh, shout out to them. Shout out to them. Uh, don't forget to pre register. Pre -register you know, calm down. Hey, man, man, these people love us. They love us. It was bear type. That's what it was. I got stuff. They love notes. us, James. They love us. We got all the information. They love us. Pre register, dude. Yeah, pre register last year's top 12 for the New River uh, Hidden West Virginia Carp Open 2024. Register uh, February 3rd for the people that is not the top 12. So don't forget about that. April 24th to the 27th. Uh, always support your local bait shops. Navtown Bait and Tackle, any bait and tackle. Yep. Adams Outdoors. Yep. Uh, uh, the barber shop of the yeah. him. Always practice good carp care. Everybody get a hold of carpangler.com and tell them you would love to see them at the chili meet. Um, he has all the wild water stuff we would possibly need. Uh, I'm sure financially if he probably came it would you know it would probably be I'm sure it, it you know it would it would work for you. Well, yeah. But hey, you know, we appreciate you guys. Please share this video. Yes. Um, Shane, I'll get a hold of you soon. And don't go and don't forget to go to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, yeah, uh, and hit the like button and the bell button so you'll be notified all about our great for our great carpet pictures. 
So, yep. so is that it? We right. appreciate you guys. Later. Out of here. Hey, you know, Mary, I James. Mean, you must really appreciate it, bro. <laughs>